What is going on traders? So I did a video talking about how the Fed was printing money by adding assets back on their balance sheet. It took them 11 months to knock off almost $600 billion from their balance sheet, but only a couple of weeks to add on almost $400 billion back on. And this is why I was saying in our live stream yesterday that the Fed would be super comfortable raising rates. Some people thought that we would see a pause yesterday that Jerome Powell would, be, would flinch and be too scared to raise rates especially in the wake of the banking crisis. But I was saying that they were they are adding assets to their balance sheet and really returning back to quantitative easing, this time in the form of loans to banks. Regardless, they are still adding assets to their balance sheet and providing liquidity to the banking system. And so he has really nothing to lose by raising rates another quarter percent. So I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about the balance sheet. We'll cover the post FOMC meeting. Obviously, I went live. It was one of our best lives we had about 14,000 of you join. You guys smash the like button. Also, might have been our highest day in St. Jude's donation, so thank you so much for that. And then I'll get into why I think the Fed is actually going to pause either in the next meeting or the meeting after that, as right now the federal funds rate is above PCE. And then towards the end of the video, I will recap some of my trades, mainly the two-year treasury note futures. If you're a fan of this channel, you know I've been beating the drum about the two-year treasuries and saying that that is the trade to play for the FOMC, not the stock market. We are up about $1,500 per contract on that. Let's get right into it. So as I stated in my last video, the Fed has been adding assets to their balance sheet. Now they've been doing this through what they're calling the bank term funding program, basically giving almost endless amount of resources to the banks that need it. Even if they don't really need it, there's no way for the Fed to prove uh, whether a bank needs it. And there's no way for the Fed to actually enforce what the banks do with this money, but they are basically allowing the banks to borrow an endless supply of money and using their treasuries and their assets as collateral. And those assets end up on the Fed balance sheet because that is the collateral used for the Fed to give them out these loans, right? So instead of the Fed printing money and, and buying treasuries, what they're doing is they're basically printing money and giving it out as loans and the, the banks then giving them their treasuries as collateral. So it's really, in my view, I think materially, it, it has the same effect as, uh, as, as buying treasuries off of the market, really. And by that, I mean treasuries find their way on the Fed balance sheet and liquidity finds its way back into the banking system. So we are almost back at the same spot where we started 11 months ago, where the Fed is supposed to do quantitative easing, Quantitative easing is a fancy term for basically letting assets run off of the balance sheet or actively selling assets off of the balance sheet, the opposite of quantitative tightening. Now, one of the things that Jerome Powell said in yesterday's speech, and we'll go over that in more detail, he one of the things that he said w when asked if, if the Fed is, is looking to raise interest rates further, obviously the, the reporters and the, uh, the, the, the market participants want to know whether the Fed is going to keep raising rates. What Jerome Powell said is possible tightening in credit conditions may mean monetary tightening has less work to do. At the meeting, the FOMC meeting, I heard a significant number of people anticipating tightening credit conditions. Now, that is yet to be seen because if you take a look at the Fed balance sheet and we are increasing, again, liquidity into the banking system, I want you to take a look at the definition of loose credit or loosening credit conditions. Central banks can also loosen policy through large-scale asset purchases, known as quantitative easing. This involves purchasing government-backed or other assets, creating massive quantities of new money in the form of bank reserves. It does not directly lower interest rates or loosen credit conditions, but floods the banking system with new liquidity in the hopes that banks will increase lending. So when Jerome Powell is talking about tightening credit conditions, it's really yet to be seen whether this is going to lead to looser credit conditions or not. Because again, the, the Fed cannot enforce, and you guys know that if you watch my last video, the Fed cannot enforce what the banks do with the money. If they give banks the money, there's no way that they can enforce what the Fed actually does with the money. So we don't know whether it's going to lead to looser credit conditions or are the banks actually going to use this money, loan it out 
as opposed to using it as a backstop for safety and make themselves liquid so that they don't see a bank run like Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, et cetera, are they actually going to use that money for the purposes of protection or are they going to use that money to loan out and make more money? And this is why I said on yesterday's live stream that I can easily see the S&P 500 get to the 4200 4300 level if this right here continues and it's going to be a week to week basis so you know I, I don't think that anybody knows the extent to which assets will be added to the fed's balance sheet but as more liquidity hits the system even though i was short the market today and we'll go over trades in a second but if, if liquidity hits the system and the fed actually pauses and this leads us to our next topic is why the Fed would actually pause here, um, then that could actually provide easy monetary conditions, which the market is addicted to. Hopefully you guys watched that documentary called The Age of Easy Money. Now, the Fed funds rate is finally below PCE. This is, the, the PCE is the price index that the Fed likes to use, or they say they like to use, in order to gauge inflation over CPI. And for the first time, the Fed rate is above PCE. The last time we had that was in 2018 and the Fed actually paused at this stage. And this is why I said back in on January 24th, I said, what rhymes with Jaws? Hint, it is likely to show up on our shores by Q2 of this year. Now, I wasn't looking at that. What I was looking at was basically the two-year treasury uh, in comparison to the federal funds rate, when the two-year treasury gets below the overnight rate, you can see here in the blue line, that's when the Fed pauses. And that's why the blue line, you know, you see it going up and then flattening out, becoming straight. That's an indication that the Fed paused. So you can see here back in uh, 2006, the Fed paused. Back in 2019, when the Fed paused, 2018, 2019, and then back here in 2000, all of those leading to recessions. So I do think that we are very close to a pause. The next meeting is in May. We could, we will likely get another hike and then a pause by June. And if you take a look at the Fed funds rate futures, you can actually see by May, it is pricing in a 25 base point rate hike and then a pause and then even a cut by July. We see our first cut according to how uh, Fed funds futures uh, traders are betting that by July we will see our first cut. Now, I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say that, but I do think that before Q2 is done, we will see a pause. So what did Jerome Powell actually say in the FOMC meeting? Well, really more of the same. The only thing is, uh, if you saw his demeanor when they asked him about, when they asked him about is a soft landing possible, he paused and really looked dejected. And for the first time, didn't lean in and say, yeah, we're still aiming for a soft landing. Obviously he said that that was the goal, but he really looked dejected on that front. However, I would say overall he was dovish. He wasn't really, he didn't come in and say that we have to hammer rates higher. Uh, there was some kind of tepid language suggesting that, you know, th th there might be one more hike and then we'll see from there. But shortly thereafter, Janet Yellen, <laughs> this picture is so funny. Shortly thereafter, Janet Yellen came through and said that uh, she hasn't considered or discussed anything having to do with blanket insurance or guarantees of deposits mainly raising the officially raising the FDIC deposit limit from $250,000 higher. Obviously, we do have this backstop funding program, but the market was spooked a little bit right after she said this. Now, if you look at the two-year treasury, as I said, the short-term treasuries are the ones that are affected the most by Fed policy, not the 10-year and so our trade happened to be in the two-year treasury. I did signal that we hit a bottom here. This was the same as the 2007 bottom on the two-year treasury. And if investors aren't anticipating any more rate hikes or any more aggressive rate hikes, then that will likely signal close to the peak of the two-year treasury yields, meaning that folks will finally start to buy short-term treasuries and we could see the short-term treasury yields start to decline. Of course, as yields decline, to your treasury notes rise. It was a no brainer trade for us. That's why you know we had bought it yesterday when it was bull flagging and set a pretty tight stop limit just in case Jerome Powell came out uh, guns a blazing and did some cowboy shit and raised by you know 50 basis points or something, in which case the two year treasury rates would have soared and the two year treasury futures would have tanked. 
but he didn't do that. He came out with the customary and expected 25 basis points. And this happened to be a great trade. Again, up $1,500 per contract on this. And we also had almost that 1,200% day trade on the S&P 500. I will do a separate video going over the exact strategy that I used for that. It really wasn't anything novel. I just waited for there to be a liquidity grab. And then I entered at the first sign of an imbalance and, you know, basically just kept trading it down, drawing the imbalances, saying that, you know, for instance, if, if we got above this imbalance and I would close the trade, we didn't, we kept getting rejected. And the more that we created these imbalances, the more that, you know, I, I drew them out, stayed in the trade. And I kept saying that, that if we went above these imbalances that we kept creating on the way down, then I would be out of the trade. But it was as clean as day as we created more and more imbalances, went all the way down to almost the opening price and filled the entire gap on the S&P 500. And that ended up netting us 1200% almost on this trade. Just for reference, this went from $4 when, when I got in to 40 something dollars. So it went, you know, I spent basically $400 per contract and ended up making over $4,000 per contract on this. And shout out to those in the academy who took the trade. Glad to make your day better. There's really nothing else in the world where you can use your skills and put an, a, you know, a fixed amount of money and come out with 1200% just minutes later. Obviously, I'm not saying that's typical, I'm not saying that's expected, but actively monitoring this trade and having the skills to monitor these trades and mark every single imbalance on the way down really made this trade possible. If I was just looking at my profit and loss, I would be out of the trade out of fear of losing money, but I'm not looking at my profit and loss statement, I'm looking at the chart, and as long as the chart tells me to stay in, I'm staying in, and by the end of it, I net 1200%, hit my target, which was filling this gap right here, and I was out. If you want access to all of our trades, all my analysis, analysis on futures, analysis on stocks, analysis on options, if you want, if you want my macro analysis on the markets, you want access to all of the courses, over 60 plus course videos, uh, the Zoom calls with me. We have one this weekend as of the time of this recording, a Zoom mastermind call, where we will go over a bunch of trading technical analysis topics, Link is in the description, sign up. You will know as soon as possible if you are approved or not. It's very quick from the time that you actually book a call, take the call. You will know very quickly if you're approved or not. So sign up, link is in the description below. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Fed printing money. Do you think it's inflationary? Uh, what do you think the Fed is going to do? Do you think that they're going to pause after the next rate hike? Do you think they're even going to raise any more? Would love to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe, stay safe out there traders, peace.